That's me engaging with your online community. So yes, the reason why I'm, I'm here really, Kirsten has mentioned some of, uh, of the reasons. Uh, my background is uh, I'm a computer scientist. Uh, I, uh, I teach uh, programming for second year, so therefore the advanced programming uh, at Reading University. Um, I also teach the even more advanced pro uh, programming for the third years, uh, which is using AI um, and such uh, func functionalities and methods to solve problems that we cannot solve. So I have great fun with that. My research area is e-learning, so using computers to teach. That's what gets me, uh, me uh, excited. Uh, I have been working on many different projects over the last 10 years, uh, mostly EU, uh, but also some uh, UK-funded projects, all in this area. I have done a lot of work in, in, in seeing how can we use social networking to teach, and we'll look a little bit on, on that today. Um, how can we use it in higher education to, to do something that triggers the imagination of the students? Uh, I've looked at the quality of e-learning. What is quality of e-learning, and how do we do quality of e-learning? That is not as easy done as said, I can, I can tell you. Um, but where my true enthusiasm lies is probably in, the, in that line with the AI tools for education. I just find it fascinating that we can create something that seemingly is intelligent and use it instead of me having to work. That can get me really, really excited. <laughs> um, I have created uh, tools for, 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 for speaking with students using natural language. I have uh, looked at how can we use intelligent methods to monitor students so that I don't have to monitor students. Um, because if you have many students, you can't. The Work that I've done as a practitioner, as a, a teacher, um, started out uh, many years ago when Android came out, I would say, uh, in, in the online phone forums, I should say, when, with, when it comes to teaching. And I was very early with developing to Android. I am a self-confessed confessed, uh, Mac hater, so it came very natural to me to, uh, to, 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 to work on Android. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, at the moment I'm actually working on a Mac at home, and I've done it for whew, nine months. Kirsten, how, how, how does, does it sound nice at home when I'm working on it? The words you say, I cannot repeat. They are in Danish, so it's okay. We have a rude language. Um, but yeah, that's beside the point, really. That's not what I'm here to talk about, of course. But uh, because I was in uh, quite early on Android, uh, I, I actually managed to create um, a framework for creating games as one of the first in the world. And I made a tutorial, and I'm probably responsible for quite a few bad design games on Google Play, uh, just because a lot of beginners would have gone to my tutorials and learned how to, to, to do it. And the first game you make is always bad, I can confess. The same is true for me, myself. Um, 10,000, over 10,000 people have actually gone through my, my, my tutorial there online. And you can see I've also worked on other types of, 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 of online courses over the time. But, but that particular tutorial meant that I was asked to do this MOOC. Uh, I was approached by the university because they had realized there's something interesting in that space. People are interested in, in, in developing for mobile phones. And can we create a course out of it that will interest a lot of people? And I said, yeah, I, th I think we could. Uh, I, I, just, I just wanted to spin it a little bit so that we would, instead of teaching apps development, teach how to start coding from being a novice. Because a lot of people out there have this, I would like to do a game on the mobile phone and make a lot of money, I think, or because I think that would be interesting. So, so that was basically my, the idea I got uh, with, with, the, with the team that I work with. Um, and we created this massively open online course. MOOC as in the acronym, and that's kind of taken over the world, that acronym. It was not me who coined it, by the way. It could sound a little bit like that. It was coined in 2008 by a, a guy called George Siemens. Um, it's on the futurelearn.com 
platform. This is the, the word for, from, from the sponsor. If you would like to learn how to code, we have, we have a MOOC for you. <laughs> so please, please feel free. Uh, people can even do them on Macs. As I've said, I do it myself at the moment on a Mac. So, so um, feel free to, 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 to join in the fun. At the moment, we, just, we started last Monday. We have 20,000 people in, just around 20,000, just under 20,000 people. Uh, and, and it's great, great fun. So what I'm going to talk about here is, um, is that this is curriculum for today. Uh, first, I will touch a little bit on how we managed to attract 100,000 people. It's, it's, it's a big number. Out of the uh, over, uh, I don't know how many courses there are on Future Learn, but at the moment there's 29 courses running. Uh, so just showing a little bit about uh, how many there are. There are 60 lined up that they call coming up soon. Uh, so we, we're, we're talking in the hundreds of, of courses. And, and this course has attracted 10% of, of all the, uh, the users on FutureLearn. So, so it is doing something interesting. So I'll, I'll just talk, touch on that. And then we'll see uh, how, to, how, we, how we engage with the, the community in there. This is the slide I have for how we did it. Because this is the time where I would really have liked to say we did it because we, uh, we did a lot of work on it. But that's not the case. We kind of hit the home run, I think. We, we managed to, 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 uh, to fit a niche with the idea that generally people were interested in. We're hitting, hitting the target, so to speak. Um, and and that, that is basically getting the idea right. I think that's uh, immensely important when you're doing uh, something in, in, in this area, that you, you'd have to have something that's attractive um, to, to, to pull in the masses. Uh, we, we use a different uh, approach to what we normally do when we teach programming, fundamentally, and I'll get into how that is done. But because it's different, of course we'll attract other types of people, other types of what, what you would normally expect uh, who, who are learning programming. We use the community, the network, the social networking a lot to, to get people to come. Uh, there's no money been spent in, uh, in, in advertising at all, not even on Facebook where it's, it's actually cheap to do it. Uh, it's all worth by mouth, uh, word of mouth, I suppose it's called. Uh, and um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's how we've done it. We are on a platform that attracts people to it. Of course, that also has an impact because if a lot of people are coming to the platform and seeing something that they're interested in, uh, then they join. So, so we haven't created something new, a new place, a new service. We're doing it with somebody else. It's like a symbiosis. It makes sense to us. But of course, we have also used our network, our friends, our you know, you should, I sh I'm coming here to talk about it, and maybe one or two of you would, uh, would join as well, you know, that sort of way. But the more important thing, what, what, what I'm interested in, you're looking at how do we then engage. And the most important thing, I think, when you are going to teach something in, a, in an online form is planning. I was considering having a sign saying planning, 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 like you have location, location, location. Because it is that important. If you haven't thought about how you're going to teach when you do something online, and here I will include evangelism because that is teaching. If you haven't thought about it, there's no chance in this world that you will, you, 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 you'll succeed. Because you have no feedback. It's not like when I'm talking to you here. I can see that I'm kind of getting you to sleep right now. No, <laughs> hopefully not. But I have a feedback. I, I can respond to what is happening in the room. In e-learning, the other. Was that correct? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. The other. Nothing. There's no feedback immediately. You have to prepare it in advance, and that's why I have all these flow charts. You notice that it's not linear as well. And why is that? Well, that's when you're expecting lots of people to come in. You're not expecting the same person. They will all come with different backgrounds, with different expectations, with different aspirations. Everything is different. 
every single individual. So what you have to do is try to model it so people can follow different ways through your, uh, your, your material, different ways of, of experience what you are doing. Because if you don't, the vast majority will not be targeted by your material, and they will be bored. So the planning stage is immensely important. And I'm, I'm, I've put in that Lego car there, uh, uh, because I also want to show that I can also have Lego in my slides. I was, I was challenged to have animals in. I couldn't. Lego, I can. Yes. Thank you. It's a compliment, right? Right? Danes? Yep. <laughs> yes. No. Oh. We'll talk later. But the Lego car is there because that's basically my uh, underpinning pedagogical theory. I want to teach in a way that people experience the learning. They develop the concepts themselves, they experiment, <coughs> they create their own, well, experience throughout. That's what I'm, we're trying to do at least, with some success. And I'm just showing here how it looks. Um, I don't know if you can see any detail. I hope not, because that's a course we haven't created yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's just lots of scribbling on my whiteboard with the colleagues of mine trying to model it and, 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 and get the different ideas in. It's great fun. You could ask Pat afterwards. Uh, yeah, you weren't on this one, but uh, we have in the past. It's great fun to do it, but we have to do it. And if we don't do it well, there's no chance. And I see a lot of haphazard uh, material out there. And, and well, sometimes there's, there's a space for haphazard, for, for, for serendipity. But, but I think if you plan for serendipity, you're probably more likely to get it. Is that the thing? Can you do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you can. What, in my experience, works well is to be learner-centered. I, I do enjoy seeing myself, oddly enough, on video. Now, I've seen myself quite a lot. And now I'm kind of, yeah, I can look good on video. <laughs> there's something to, you know, of, of course. There's, uh, there's, it's nice to get some accolade. However, that's not important. It is the person who's coming to your, to your course. He's the one, or she's the one, who's, who's going to have the experience. So therefore, the material has to, be, has to be made in a way where you facilitate. That's powerful. But facilitate the, this learner-learner interaction. Because if you can get the learners to learn with each other, well, not only have you made an experience where well, they, they will experience other people, they, they will maybe uh, go out and find out things you hadn't even not prepared for. Was that a Mac crashing, by the way? Ah, oh. oh, it's a PC. Uh, why, why wasn't it blue screen then? Ah, okay, we're back. <laughs> That would have been. I have, I have actually, in the last five years, been to quite a few conferences where Macs are, are crashing. And people always say, oh, that's never experienced that before. <laughs> it's like a fly flying into a window, I think. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, that was unexpected. We didn't plan this, by the way. Um, yes. Creating a space where learners can meet and learn together. Then, then, then you have something powerful going. And if you can even get to a situation where you have a learning community, well, where learners support each other, not only do they have all the experience above, you have also less work to do. And quite frankly, if you have 10,000 people, which is the smallest of the courses I've run on, 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 on Future Learn, we, we, we do runs at a time, we've done four of them, 10,000 people, the amount of work you have, 
you wouldn't do anything else for, for, for the weeks it's running. I can't, I can't live. I also have uh, people who are paying out on, uh, at Reading University I have to, to help once in a while. So, so you want to create this kind of community where it's, it's getting self-supported. Of course, the quality of the content is important, but you cannot ever beat the BBC. Well, you could if you had millions of pounds. But I'm not claiming to have a million pounds, because it would be wrong. But what I can do is, by good planning, create some material that will take you through this experience. So yes, of course, I'm putting a lot of, of effort into it. Uh, and the quality of the content, as I said, is important. But I think what is more important is to, to have a, 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 a software that will enable people to have communities. That you have a community that, where you are um, well, being friendly, allowing people to have mistakes, even showing your own mistakes. I have actually, in my videos on FutureLearn, created mistakes and not removed them. Because I think it's very, very valid as a programmer, as an aspiring programmer, to know that everyone makes mistakes. They will see my mistake, I will show how I get out of the mistake, they will learn from my mistake. So when they are doing a mistake themselves, they know how to go about it. And then they can get help from somebody else who maybe is in the community because they know how it didn't work. This is the arrow. Ooh, I can't find out myself what. Somebody else will be able to help. It's very important that we allow mistakes. You shouldn't be the community. You should build a community. Because if you are the community, you, you break your neck. Creating experiences instead of instruction is really hard. It's so easy to think in instructions. It's so easy to take people along their way, pick their hands, and walk with them. I shouldn't walk too far. <laughs> I realize my... <laughs> but that just doesn't work. If you have, if you have instruction they will never ex experience it. They will never take it further. The experience is very important. Facilitate meeting points. Ask questions. Be a little bit like a salesman. If you notice, if you go and buy something, you will never end with a statement. They will always say, so how did you like it? What was the experience like? Could you see it used in your own... That kind of questions. But if you do that, that's actually a very simple technique to get people to engage. And you suddenly have a, a place where people can engage, and if you're not responding, somebody else will, and suddenly you have this community. So use questions. Use questions a lot. But it is easy to make mistakes. I made plenty. I confess. I have created places where I just had instruction, where I didn't have, uh, have, have, have had any questions, and people didn't like it. Because if I didn't, the comments would be poor. We've had to actually completely change the videos for this run, um, and, and it has helped a lot. I now know that I need the questions at the end. Leave a comment, and I will help you. That's a classic mistake. Boy, did I get a lot of questions. Accessibility, we don't think about it. Not everyone uh, can look at colors and distinguish them. Um, I had a red ball and a green background. Big mistake. Africa, we had a Nigerian guy who had to walk between different net cafes because he used up all his limits in downloading our videos. Poor guy. In evangelism, I thought I would try and bring it together into something that is more um, targeted. By the way, I like that uh, Facebook thing. But uh, I have so many times seen that people say something like, social networking is great, let's build one. Let's build a tool and have it for ourselves. That's not social networking, that's a tool. Social networking is use the social tool and create something in it. 
then you're part of the social network. What you're building will have networks with people who are not in your normal group, and it will spread. But if you create a new one, you will only have your friends there. I did that mistake once myself. I created a social network for our students out in Reading University. It worked fantastically for one year until Facebook came about, and it killed it completely. But it worked great for that time. We must use the, the, the tools that are out there because we want to engage with real people, not our own friends. Don't answer your own questions. Because nobody is interested in those. They have their own questions. Use the, the, the network to get the questions. Make sure that you allow questions. Does anyone, can anyone guess what that is? That red thing? You're not saying it because I told you. And, and, and nor you. It's, um, I, 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 can't, I can't, I'm not a theolo theologian. I am a computer scientist. It's actually the contradictions of the Bible. It's taken from atheistmeme.org, so it might not be completely correct. But I did check a few of them, and I am a logics guy, and they seem correct to me. Like uh, yesterday we heard, if you're not for me, you're against me. If you're not against me, you're for me. That does not really work together that well. It is a contradiction. What I'm saying here is the world that we are seeing, I agree with Tom's, uh, stay, what he stated, and actually I was going to talk quite a lot about how we can live with contra contradictions these days. I see it in my students, I see it in myself. Um, they did in the old days as well. <laughs> it's not a new thing. And, and, and yeah, we should, we should actually focus on what we can learn when we... Um, when we meet the contradictions, because there's good knowledge to be learned uh, and experienced through contradictions. It's, it's nice if you're at school, and, and, and that happens, I suppose. But, but the problem there is, of course, you won't learn a thing if you have all the answers up front. Um, we need to not tell the truth. Because if we say up front that we have the truth, even if we did, uh, they wouldn't listen then. Uh, there's no, 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 no way to engage except you get some trolls. Trolls are nice because it gives you an opportunity to spend a lot of time <laughs> if you want to have time spent. Uh, challenge the intellect, please. Don't make it uh, an MCQ. Because then again, there won't be any um, real uh, engagement. And MCQ is really easy to fill in and forget about. This one, I put in. And I actually think that it wouldn't take a lot of code to get this to work. But I put it in to show you that if you speak language that you understand yourself. Right, Pat? That's easy enough. Yeah. Uh, but if you speak language that you understand yourself, others might not. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that thing is just saying uh, something about that. We have an awful lot of that. And, 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 and I think we should try and, uh, well, it, unless it's used for, 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 for effect, try and limit it. We are in good uh, company. Should I, I should allow people to... I, I know that I'm, I'm physically challenged. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, you have fun sometimes with that, putting in what uh, you see what Google uh, expects it to be. We are in good company. I especially like the Methodists, a pa Baptist who, who can read. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On that note, I'm getting to the end. Um, it's always difficult because I'm doing e-learning, but I think that it, some, of, some of these thoughts are applicable to, 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 to what we're trying to do in evangelism. And um, yeah, this is for legal purposes. I've used images that have to have this. So if you like the images, you can go and click on them. Good. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>